over here i'm going to kind of do it as i'm going through the unboxing here just looking at when you open up the box you have the user manual and then underneath that is the screwdriver kit itself this thing is really cool especially if you're dealing with any small screws pcs electronics just anything that needs an electric screwdriver but it's not just that there are a lot of other things in here that just make this really nice but looking first here at the magnetic pad so you can put screws or anything like that on this and it'll hold there and then i'm gonna freeze this image right here because this is a still these are the long bits and then the short bits i'm not going to go through all of these but i would recommend looking through these will this suit your needs if not, as long as you make sure that the socket type can fit this, if you buy something else and it'll fit, you can expand this if you wanted to. But here, I think for most people, this is going to cover all of their bases, especially just to kind of depends on what you're dealing with. Me, for PCs and small electronics, this is 100% going to cover my needs. So in a second, I'm going to cover the user manual and it gives a breakdown of all these different parts. I won't go through every single one and say every single name. We kind of jump around a little bit, but I do generally want to cover what this has in it. But let's look at what else is in this package. We have our USB type C charging cable. This plugs into the bottom of the case and it charges the electric screwdriver. With that electric screwdriver, the input is five volts at 0.2 amps. Rated voltage is 3.7 volts. It is a lithium ion battery. Battery capacity is 350 milliamps. No load speed is 170 revolutions per minute. Charging time, approximately 160 minutes. Last in the box, we have the anti-static wristband. And this is a nice touch for anybody that does build PCs, or again, if you're working with electronics. So now let's go ahead and shift over to a still image, again, of all the bits and everything that you get inside of the case. Starting on the left-hand side here, you have the different screwdriver bits. All of these are made out of S2 steel. And then with this, again, just check is this going to suit all of your needs? Or are you going to need to get some other ones if you don't have exactly what you need here? I think for most people, this is going to cover their bases, but just in case. So we have all those different bits over here. So you'll look at the cross type and then the slot type. And then based off that, do you need the Torx, Hex, W type, Y type, whatever it may be. Then on the right hand side, these are all the other accessories that you get here. And this is what I want to cover in more depth. So we have the metal spudger here, point spudger, hook spudger, flexibility pry tool, angled tweezers, blunt tweezers, suction cup, plastic spudger, opening pick, magnetic pad, wrist strap, charging cable. And then that one for the charging cable, it's the 500 millimeter and it's type C, like I mentioned earlier. With this, a lot of cool extras that you get. I have another Hoto tool. It's just the electric screwdriver, and that one's great. And I have the other bits that I could use there that I could use between both of these, by the way. But with this one coming with all the extras, it is something that I can utilize it with more electronics, especially when I'm looking at something. I'm going to look at a controller here in a little bit, but something that needs to be pried open. I have the tools now in this kit to do that, which is great. So for me, the big draw was I get to utilize this with my PC, but also for any other electronics that do need, again, to be pried open. So now I'm just gonna look at the actual device. I do wanna note a couple things. So you have the two different modes here. So you have one and two. These are just the differences in torque here. It uses like a magnetic connection at the bottom to charge in the case. And then you have just your different directions there. And then on top of this, it has the light. I like the light because if you are in an area where it is hard to see, it's just built into that. So it is going to be easy to see if you're kind of deep inside of your PC case or something like that. So this is where I'm trying to look at the magnetic connection where this will charge here. Hard for my camera to kind of focus in on it, but it is down there at the bottom. And then on the other side there, you would have the USB Type-C input. So now I'm just going to roll through some of the things that we just covered in the manual here. So we have the opening pick. I'm going to look at the metal spudger after this. So this one I do use with the controller. It was just easier to actually pry everything open is what I found. The paint does kind of scrape off a little bit, though. Do keep that in mind. Next, we have the point spudger and the hook spudger. This thing is pretty sharp. So with that, I mean, you're going to be mindful of how you're using it because I could easily see either of these. This is the point right here. If you miss and you accidentally hit yourself, I mean, you're going to draw blood for sure. 
I believe this is the flexible pry tool here. So a piece of metal on this that you could use to help pry something up. That isn't like the plastic one. It just has a little bit more give to it. After that, we have the angled tweezers and then the blunt tweezers. I like this because a lot of times I'm working on something. If there's something I can't quite get to, having tweezers with that is very, very nice. Otherwise I have to go get the other ones that we have in the downstairs bathroom. This is just easy to do. This again right here though, very sharp with the angled tweezers. So just be very careful around these. After that, you have the plastic suction cup and that it even has like a little hook on it. So if you need to hook anything to that, then we have our plastic spudgers here. You have three of these. I like that just in case over time, I'm assuming they're gonna kind of get messed up. And then here, we're just looking at all the different bits. In the bottom right-hand corner, you can see that you can magnetize the bits. I do like this. This is, especially when we're dealing with something that's, I mean, the screw is very small and we're in a tight space. If it falls, you can easily just grab that if you need to. So I do like that touch. And now I'm just looking at throwing in one of the bits and using this. So it does hold in there very tight. We have the forward and reverse button. And then you see that the light comes on underneath that you have one and two for the gears. It doesn't specify how that changes the torque, but for the electric maximum torque, this is 0.2 newtons per meter. Manual maximum torque is three newtons per meter. So in certain instances, you may need to manually adjust whatever screw or the bit may be in order to get it going. And then you can actually use it for the electrical portion. Just keep that in mind. So now I'm going to go ahead and shift over to me disassembling this controller that I got. So I got two of these from a company and one came broken. So this one, essentially the thumbstick is just destroyed. So I figured, Hey, let's go ahead and pull this thing apart. Maybe depending if it's pretty modular, I could repair it. Unfortunately, I can't, but it was still fun to actually pull this apart and just look at the control board and just everything that it has under the hood here. Utilizing the like longer stem, like screw bit, the screwdriver bit. I like that being included because some of the other ones don't have that. And if it doesn't have that, you're kind of kind of be out of luck when it comes to certain electronics that yes, the screw is just in an area where you need something longer to actually even reach it. I magnetized this so you can see that, yes, it does stick to this, which is awesome. I like that. And then you have that magnetic pad after that, utilizing the plastic spudger. This is where I was like, I'm trying to get it apart. And I think it still could have gotten the job done, but I was like, man, I'm going to cut myself with this if it accidentally slides over and hits my hand. So went with the metal one and it was just easier to use. So pulled this apart, utilizing that and that process again, much easier than the plastic one. But again, you have options here. So I like what they've done with this kit. It covers all of my things that I would need this for, which is great all in one compact, convenient case. After I get this apart, now we get to use the electric screwdriver again, but this is where you can see there's not enough torque for me to just get these screws out. I have to manually turn this to at least get it going. And then after a certain point, I can then use the electric screwdriver portion here. So that once I got it going, certain point you can feel it, it will go. If I start to do it, nothing happens, right? So it'll just sit there and you can hold down the button as long as you want. Nothing's actually going to move. You just need to get it going. After that, utilizing the tweezers just to pull some of these parts out just to see, hey, how does this feel when trying to do that? Certain ones I end up using my hand here because it's just not quite enough force in order to fully pull this out. But moving around wires and things like that, it was great for that. Or if I needed to get some small bit out, I could utilize it with that as well. Then after this, I actually ended up needing to take some more screws out that I didn't initially notice. And I could actually then pull the whole board out, which is great. 
I ended up using the angled pliers here also because there was a screw in there that actually kind of got trapped so I could use that to pull that little piece out. So just with this controller here, I was able to fully handle disassembling this and it was fun to just ex experiment a little bit with what I could use tool wise. So that's actually going to be it for this video. I'm going to let this one roll out. I like everything that they've done here. Again, you have all of these tools in a compact case. There is a huge variety of things you could ultimately use this with. Just make sure, hey, this has all the bits that I need and it will cover all of my bases. So now I get to travel with this if I need to. Again, it's just so compact. And then just the capacity of that electric screwdriver where you get 160 minutes potentially out of it is awesome. So it's not something that you need to charge all the time. So that's going to wrap this video up. If you have any questions about this, let me know in the comment section. I will have a link for this in the description if you want to pick it up. I haven't talked about the price yet, but this is $120. This does have a $15 off coupon right now, and they run those pretty frequently. So always check back for the coupons and codes. I think this is a solid price point for as much as you're getting with this. Now, if you don't need all the extras, the, you're looking at the spudgers and all those other things, they have just the electric screwdriver with the bits. You can just buy that. That typically runs about $60. I did a review on that. I will have a link for that in the description. So that's another option here. They have all these other products that generally cover all of your needs when it comes to electronics and things like that with these smaller bits. So again, that would be something else that you consider if you don't need all of these things so that is going to wrap this video up if you like the video hit the like button for me as it helps the channel out if you want to continue to follow along with all my content hit the subscribe button and as always thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video